for the average person going and shopping, what are the, the easiest things they can do? Maybe they don't know anything about GMOs. What are some just really simple measures right. they can take? I would become aware of which are the products made from soy and corn. High fructose corn syrup, soy, lecithin, soy protein isolate, dextrose, maltodextrose, maltodextrin. These are the things that are derived from soy and corn. We have a much longer list on our shopping guide. So when you go and buy, for example, a spaghetti sauce, if it contains soybean oil and high fructose corn syrup, which some popular spaghetti sauces do, you can put that back on the shelf and take one that maybe there's a light brand that contains olive oil but no sweetener. And it's the same brand and it costs the same, but it's non-GMO. It's easier to buy non-GMO in natural product stores, but you can also find non-GM choices in regular supermarkets as well. And buying organic is, as of right now, the organic seal, is that kind of the only? Organic products are not allowed to use GM ingredients. And so you not only can avoid GMOs by buying organic, but you get the other benefits of organic at the same time. So that's our number one recommendation is to buy organic. There's also conventional non-organic brands that have non-GMO labels on them. That means they've taken steps to avoid contamination and use of genetically engineered ingredients. Okay. Do you want to talk about the 30-day um, non-GMO challenge? We would like to challenge you to spend 30 days without eating foods derived by genetically modified crops. And so we have a no GMO 30 day challenge. I mean, you'll find it on our website soon at healthyeating.org and the materials designed to help you find non-GM products. We also have plenty of motivational materials about the health dangers, which when you read about them will, will uh, probably motivate you to continue beyond those 30 days. I'll give you one motivating piece of information. The only human feeding study ever conducted on genetically modified foods, which in itself is a bizarre thing since it's fed to more than a billion people, it's only had one human feeding study published, showed that genes transferred from the food we eat, the genetically modified food, into the bacteria living inside our intestines, integrated into the DNA and continued to function. That means long after we stop eating genetically engineered foods, we may still have this foreign genetically modified proteins maybe even the Bt toxin, this insecticide used in corn, produced inside our gut, inside our, back, inside our intestines. Which means eating a genetically engineered corn chip might turn your intestinal flora into living pesticide factories, possibly for the rest of our lives. So we may be colonizing the gut bacteria of North America from these genetically modified crops. Now that is high in the yuck factor, I admit, but it's also very dangerous. And so we recommend just say no. Just say no to GMOs, buy organic when you can, and use the non-GMO shopping guide in general to help guide your not healthier non-GMO choices. Great. Anything, anything else you'd like to add? I encourage people not to feel like a victim, but to f take that energy that they may feel that, you know, why are we having to eat this, and to flip it and to feel like a victor so we can determine what we consider to be food and what we consider to be non-food and not let the biotech industry or poor FDA oversight dictate to us and tell us that we have to eat these foods. So it's an opportunity for us to take more control of our own diet, which turns out to be a step of activism, because the more people that do this, the easier it will be to drive it from the food chain altogether. Mm -hmm.